Uh, one artist we haven't mentioned, Madonna. Yes. Obviously, you worked with her on, on quite a lot of material as well. Yeah. Um, what it feels like for a girl. Yes. Uh, you you co-wrote. Um, I was Nothing trying to think fails. Well, yeah. Nothing fails. fails. The other yes. track. Yeah, of course. Um, what was she like to work with? Because she has this mystery. Although mm. everybody seems to have seen a lot from her. Yeah. She's pushed boundaries and kind of still pushing boundaries today. But did you find out what she was really like as a as a human being rather than a, an artist? Um, well, let me say, uh, you know. Um, because I've made records with her doesn't mean that, you know, I'm, I'm sort of intimately um, aware of everything going on in her life. Yeah. But I would say from my experience of her that I think one thing about Madonna where she is completely underrated is she's very much a co-producer. Um, she was absolutely in there with, with me in the studio and very attentive musically to what's going on. And she's not somebody who kind of, you know, faxes through a vocal and, and then you send her the record when you're done. It, she's very, very involved, very directly and actually what I loved uh, was we were it, I was hearing some stuff that was to become the music album the Mirway songs and, and a couple of Willie Morbitt songs and she was playing me the demos and I thought gosh these are fantastic I loved it and I, I, as a consequence of working with Madonna on that record I, I got to meet Willie Morbitt who's a fantastic guy and um, I think William wouldn't mind me saying that in some respects when you listen to Ray of Light um, it's really a Willie Morbitt album produced by Madonna Yeah, it's like she took that th- thing that he did, that soundscape thing that you can hear on the Basimatic records, and he just stuck this huge flagpole mark pop right in the middle of it and gave his songs this kind of power. And I thought she was fantastic at it. I remember when she was uh, playing me some of those demos, she just said to me, she said, um, I'm really good at simple. She said, I do simple really well. And when I heard the so- de- songs, I said, yes, you just, that's what you are. You're brilliant at yeah. it. And, and, I th- and when I'd sent her over the, a sketch that was the backing track to what it feels like for a girl and there's that moment when we're finally together in the studio and she pulls out a piece of paper with where she scri- scribbles some lyrics and I'm finally going to hear what she's intending to sing over the top and as soon as she started singing it there was like the outward me keeping my kind of composed face and there's a little me inside me going Woo! <laughs> <laughs> was it quite a daunting experience though I yeah. mean obviously very exciting to be working yes. with the biggest female artists yes. of all time yeah but quite quite scary as well, though. Yeah, I, I I have to admit, it's probably the only time I, I felt a little bit frightened. I wouldn't say I was, t- you know, horrified. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you, know, exactly. you don't get taken out and shot or something. You don't <laughs> make a good record, but it was that I was very frightened, and I think that's why I made sure um, I had um, backup in the sense of people in the studio had worked with her before, who were sort of operating the the gear, and I was more a kind of chin stroking presence in the back rather than somebody who might mess up and press the wrong button and hit delete or something yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> but um, no she was a joy to work, work with and I, I do actually think that we have to correct this image that it's all, this, that people have that it's all just about style and, that, and the fact is you don't get to have a career as long as that in music with all those hits unless you're actually pretty sussed about the music. Totally. It's not just about hairstyles and, and stuff. I mean that is important but it's not it's not all it was. If that's all she's good at, she wouldn't be... Yeah, it's like you said, she's very hands-on. She's yeah. very involved. She yes. doesn't just sing and kind of takes the control. She's she's yeah. very involved with yeah. all her And again, her work that's colleagues. why in practice it comes down to if she likes it and maybe a small group of friends, then that's it. She never even asks record company people, do you like it? It's like, what are they going to say? She, she's got, she knows better than they do. Did you have to pinch yourself, though, when you, when you were sat <laughs> yeah. working with her? Of course I did. What was it think? quite surreal to be <laughs> it's working? It was very surreal. Yeah, of course yeah. it was. It was like... Um, yeah, utterly unreal and utterly lovable too. And um, I was very, very kind of nervous for the first day. Um, but when I went home at the end of it, I just thought, I'm working with Madonna. <laughs> yeah. And it's great to look back on that as well. Yes. I mean, you've worked with so many artists. Yeah, and also way, I knew that what we were doing was was artistically great as well. I knew we were doing something that was worthwhile and that would be, whether it would be the biggest thing she'd ever do, I don't think it would, but I thought it'll be something that people come back to again and would love. Somebody um, sent in a question actually, which you've pretty much answered the question yeah. for. How does the songwriting process work with Madonna compared to the other artists you've you've worked with? I, yeah, I mean, in that, I think it, it. I don't think there's one way to write a song. I think part of the pleasure of, of my job is actually that everybody's doing it different ways. As I said, it's really interesting with the stuff I'm doing with Alison. That this is the first time in some time really where it's like let's start with a lyric sheet. Um, often people, you know, hum a melody and then vaguely try and fit lyrics to it later and. She starts with the lyrics, and and that's that's quite unusual. But I'm enjoying that way around of doing it. You know? Yeah, something something new. Yeah, yeah. Um, a friend of mine, Johnny, he he mentioned that to you. He yeah. knew you were coming on. He said he's well, he's obviously mad yeah. on Madonna anyway. Yeah. But nothing fails was played at his civil partnership ceremony Excellent. with his partner Graham. Yeah, and he just wanted to 
to let you know that because he, oh. he loves the work that you've done with Madonna as well as the other work that she's done with other producers. Well, I have to um, admit that song, cause, which I, I wrote with um, Jem, and then we sent it to Madonna and she changed some of the lyrics and a couple of melodic things. Um, I actually wrote the first verse um, lyric so I don't. I mean, I do write lyrics sometimes. Yeah. People think I'm just the kind of geek guy. Um, just as I know, Immy like um, worries that the geek side of what she does wasn't always appreciated. Well, the other side of it is like you know, I do sometimes scribble the odd lyric, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's me. So I, I'm, I'm I'm I think it's wonderful who's walking down the aisle to some words what I wrote. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's quite you. touching, is it? Yeah, and, and you play <laughs> instruments as well. You know, producer, yeah. writer. You you do pretty much everything. Yeah, I'll do I'll do anything that, that helps the song. I mean, I mean, actually, one thing that was wonderful when I was working with Alanis Morissette was um, while we were writing each day. Um, I would try and prepare. In my mind, I had the idea I want to have like three possible ideas to play her, and then I can run with whatever's inspiring her. Um, and it would always be this thing where you know I'd carefully plan one thing. I think, oh shit, she's going to go with this one, and I've got this kind of synthesizer there, and she'll think that's really cool. And then just in the last moment, you know, I, I, a book would fall on the synthesizer and it'd make a funny noise, and she'd walk through the door at that moment and say, "Oh, I really like that." Yeah, you <laughs> say, <laughs> "Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that's the one." And then you, know, you, you kind of turn that into a song, out and, and that would be the song. That's know? brilliant, because that's <laughs> in a way that's sh- how it should be, because yes. you like that in the moment. It's yes. got to be used. It's not like contrived in any way. No, it's no, I think it's like a natural you, you, process. Yes, I mean, I think so. It, it's like sometimes there's these carefully crafted things that you think. Oh, she's going to go for that, but then no. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the mistakes are not always bad. No, no. I think yeah. in the creative process, and I mean, I, I think by the time you finish the recording and 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 it's ready to be released, hopefully you've done all your hard work at making sure everything's just in the right place. But uh, in the creative moment, a song can come from anything. You mentioned Alison Moyet. Are yeah. we allowed to talk about this? Yeah, yeah it's, yes, it's totally. very fresh, isn't it? Yeah, very exciting as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very, her. very excited. Um, uh, Alison got in touch with me. Um, it's one of the again this is a lucky coincidences that um, she's managed by the the same people who look after Diana Vickers, and you know through what was going on in the office, um, she got in touch. And you know I'm I'm a huge fan of hers already. And um, we did a little bit of um, writing um, and immediately hit it off. And then um, we both had other things we had to do. She had touring commitments, and then I've I had other people's records I had to produce. And we just finally got back into it, and we're really enjoying it. 